the meeting to order and ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The opening public comment from the board this evening. Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Bertram. I just wanted to comment on the lane walk that was held this Saturday. Um, we were very pleased that 35 to 40 people um, attended the walk. And the next walk is scheduled for Saturday the 26th at 10 a.m. So if anyone is interested in taking a walk through a beautiful piece of property, uh, we are meeting at the Holman Street Bridge. Again, that's 426 at 10 a.m. I also wanted to announce that there will be a public forum relative to the lane acquisition on Thursday, May 1st at the library from 5.30 to 7. This will be basically a drop-in um, session so that anyone with questions or wants more information about the property can come to the library between 5.30 and 7, and members of the Open Space Acquisition Team will be there to answer any questions. And finally, there is a website dedicated to the Lane property called savethelaneland.org. Again, that's savethelaneland.org, all one word. I know that PAC had been doing a public service announcement about this property. Does anybody know if that is completed and on YouTube yet? It, it is, and it's actually a very good video, so I would encourage people to go to YouTube, to the Lunenburg Access Channel, and take a look at that video. Excellent. Any other public comment from the board this evening? Okay, several announcements. First, I want to thank the Lunenburg Family Lions Club for hosting the Easter egg hunt, which I had the privilege of attending on Saturday. Uh, if you've ever seen or wanted to see a whole field full of plastic eggs kind of devoured and probably actually really devoured because they all had candy in less than five minutes, it was pretty, pretty impressive. I, I, I don't know how many children were there. It had to be, I guess, around 100. So it was a really fun event and they had the Easter Bunny came on the fire truck not to be outdone by Santa, so uh, thank you for doing that. It was a great event. Also, some reminder announcements that Representative Benson will be having office hours in Lunenburg, and that will be on Tuesday, May 13th, right here at in this room uh, on town, Lunenburg Town Hall, Joseph F. Bellotta meeting room, from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m., Tuesday, May 13th. Also a reminder that the Boys and Girls Club is having their townwide yard sale on Saturday, May 17th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, you can participate by renting space at the uh, Boys and Girls Club parking lot by registering your house and selling items on your own. And you can shop the sale and find some great treasures. There will be a map available re uh, designating all the registered houses. And you can find more information at the bgcluboflunenburg.org. Uh, on next Wednesday, April 30th, the Lunenburg Civic Forum and the Lunenburg Ledger will have their uh, candidates debate, which they have every time there is a, a contested, certainly sele uh, selectman seat, but other seats as well in the past. But this year it will be a selectman debate uh, right here starting at 7 p.m. It will be televised. Uh, if you've seen them before, it'll be the same format. Uh, they will also give time to other candidates who are running for other positions that are contested so they will have time to speak and introduce themselves for the people listening at home so that's next Wednesday uh, April 30th 7 p.m. right here in this room uh, as, as Mrs. Bertram just said there's the walk of the lane conservation property this coming Saturday April 26th at 10 a.m. and they're going to meet at the south end of the Holman Street Bridge for a walk similar to the one that was uh, hosted this past Saturday. And last but not least we have the yard waste days. So the guidelines for the disposal of yard waste for Lunenburg residents. The Lunenburg landfill off of Young's Road will be open on Saturdays starting this Saturday, April 26th, through Saturday, May 31st. 
8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Acceptable material, gla grass clippings, bark mulch, wood chips, leaves, brush, with a diameter not to exceed three inches, shrubbery and plantings with the same restrictions. You can bring any container to bring the yard waste there, but you have to take the container back. You cannot bring garbage, trash, or rubbish of any kind. And no materials within the landfill are to be given away or sold. Access will be restricted to the disposal area and commercial landscapers will not be allowed to dump. It is residents only and the travel is permitted only on the town easement. No trespassing on the Tri-Town Landing development. So again, this will be, I'll be announcing this every selectman's meeting until the yard waste days are over. Uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturdays, starting this Saturday. Any public comment from the public? Phyllis Luck, 50 Sunset Lane. I wanted to let everyone know that this coming Saturday from 10 to 2, the Lunenburg Police Department is hosting Drug Give Back Day. There's going to be a big box in the lobby of the police department. You can bring any prescription drugs, over-the-counter medication, even medication for your pets that you no longer want to use, and it'll be taken away. It, this, the whole point is f to try to keep our groundwater free of people flushing down medications and things like that. And no questions asked. There'll be a police officer there. Just drop them off in the big cardboard box. What's the date and time? Um, again? This Saturday from 10 to 2. Thank you. Any other public comment from the public? Okay. So we're going to start with the review, discussion, and recommendation of warrant articles. Um, we're going to skip over number article 9 and 19 because those are with the town manager solely, but we have two. Uh, Two other public bodies here on two other articles. We have Article 27, which is the registered marijuana dispensaries. And we'll start with that. So if the planning board members want to come up. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? Well, how about yourself? I am wonderful, thank you. Before you start, I have one quick question, only because the town manager asked me. So the, we have printouts here of what was sent. Who, who, did we get it right from? Yeah, I just wanted to, to double check if what Marjorie sent over to us is different than what would be printed in the warrant. Any more, more of the same? No, no, I, okay. it should okay. not be. Okay. okay, all Sorry about that. I thought it would help facilitate the conversation. My name is Joanna Bellotta Simeone, 362 Sunset Lane, Lunenburg, Mass, and I am the chair of the Lunenburg Planning Board. We're working on providing a new bylaw for medical marijuana in the town of Lunenburg. On March 18th, we, our first step, we had a workshop with the Board of Selectmen to review, gather feedback on our town warrant articles, receive feedback, that when all the feedback given to us at that workshop was already added in the bylaws. So there was nothing that you recommended that we did not take in, just so you know. On March 24th, we had our first public hearing. On April 14th, we had a continuation. And on April 22nd, we were today are reviewing the warrant and hopefully requesting your support of the updated draft bylaw for the town meeting. Now, I went through all this with you guys at the workshop and at the public hearing, so I don't know if you want me to just read what we changed from March 18th to current, because I know every time we changed it, we emailed you guys an updated draft, and we put an updated draft on the planning board website and on the town website. So what I, would you like me I to do? I would probably say that for people who have not heard about this, and this might be the first time that you just give the overview, I don't know, know that it's necessary to give a detailed 
change history of everything, okay. but just where, where it was coming from. And, and so a, okay. a view is if somebody is hearing this for the first time. Mr. Chairman, the other question I have is what was just handed to us, is that what's in the warrant? That's what we just asked, and that's what... I believe it to be. Okay, so therefore, the warrant came in today's mail. So for townspeople that are either seeing it today and they got it in the mail, or when it's rebroadcast, they can look at their finance committee warrant and follow along the discussion after the meeting. Yes, and if we make any changes or recommendations this evening, we would have to hold them for town meeting floor because the warrant has already been published. So anything we do want to add or change, we just have to bookmark to make sure that we speak of that out, at, call that out at the town meeting. Okay. All righty. So a registered marijuana dispensary is also known as Medical Marijuana Treatment Center. It means a not-for-profit entity registered under 105 CMR 725.000 that acquires, cultivates, possesses processes, including development of related products such as edible marijuana infused products, tentacles, aerosols, oils, or ointments. Transfer, transport, sells, distributes, dispense, or administers marijuana products containing marijuana related supplies or educational materials to registered qualifying patients or their personal caregivers unless otherwise specified RMD refers to the site of dispensing, cultivating, and preparation of marijuana. A little bit of background information. The Department of Public Health announced the first 20 registered medical marijuana dispensaries. I listed those just for educational for people because I figured I'd try to make a handout for a town meeting. So I just listed the 20 that were chosen so people can identify those areas. The voter approved law established Massachusetts medical marijuana program requires one dispensary in each county. Four counties, Berkshire, Duke, Franklin, and Nantucket did not have any applicants that were looking for it there as of yet. The licensed dispensaries will not be allowed to open until they can demonstrate compliance with all local ordinance, regulations, and bylaws. And the 2012 law authorized the licensing of up to 35 dispensaries in the first year of the program's operation, and they can, as we move forward, will dispense more. But as of right now, the state's only allotting 35, five in Worcester County. So municipalities had basically three options once this law was passed. And what we could do is we could do nothing, which would be an as of right. So if someone petitioned the state to either cultivate or open a dispensary and the state approved that, they would come to Lunenburg and open and there would be no um, zoning that would prevent them to go wherever they wanted. It would be a just as right. We could, as a town, adopt a moratorium, which the state is allowing towns to do up until December 31st of this year, 14, which we had tried in January. But I, I think the confusion lies with, and, and what we always got to try to bring people back to, Everybody has feelings about medical marijuana. What we're trying to do is just say where it's zoning. The law has already passed that medical marijuana is here. It's usable, it's accessible, and each town and community can provide that as long as they go to the state and get that approval. So what we want to do is be proactive and make sure that we're zoning them in the right areas in our community. And that's what this is about, is basically where we're going to zone them. It's not about how I feel, should it come to Lunenburg or should it not. That's already here. And so then the third is to amend the town zoning bylaws, which is what we're looking to do. So the first purpose um, kind of we touched in the opening, and that did not change. The applicability did um, through the public hearings in your workshops. So all RMD shall comply with the regulations promulgated by the Massachusetts Department of the Public Health, DPH, 105 CMR 725000, which is a 58-page document. So that's not printed, but we do have it again on the Planning Board website and on the Town of Lunenburg website. So please, anybody that wants to read that, familiarize themselves with it. It is there for viewing, on, um, and it's 58 pages. So... 
um, Public Health, the CMR 725, implementation of an act for the humanitarian medical use of marijuana, effective May 24th, 2013, and any subsequent amendments thereto. I did see there was no space there, I already fixed it. 4.16.2.2, that changed from our first meeting. The town reserves the right to require provisions in the DPH regulations for which the state granted waivers and or exemptions to the RMD applicant based on the provisions of section 8.3.3 as to a special permit and section 8.4 as to a development plan review. Okay, I'm gonna, just because we're doing this in order. Sure. And again, I realize that there's no way you could possibly print everything here, but mm -hmm. if you can just explain to people home what those what the, those two sections, what you're trying to do with that section, just briefly. What are we? Res we're reserving the right to require provisions that the state may have granted waivers on, based on two sections. And can you just say what those? Sections were yes, 8.4 is the development plan review that would come in front of us. So if the state waived something that was in our local bylaw for a development plan review, we could not grant that waiver. Or we could, that would be up to the planning board if they wanted to waive that. But if our bylaw specifically says A, and they're looking to waive A, we are, we are saying here that we won't necessarily waive A. And it's the same with the um, 8.3.3, the special permitting would be the same thing. And we, on the next page, one of your feedback was to list what that criteria is, so we have that there listed. Thank you. You're welcome. Definition we covered, locations. RMDs 4.16.4.1. RMDs that include retail processing and cultivation are allowed in the commercial districts by a special permit. 4.16.4.2, cultivation and or agricultural processing allowed in all districts by right because of the right to farm uh, bylaw, which is referenced here. If applicant is eligible for that protection under section 4.1, Point three B in GLC forty A three. Any cultivation within a building will require a special permit. So if they're not in the right farm and they're going to do that within a building, they just have to get the special permit. Four point sixteen four point three. RMD facilities that cultivate and process but do not do retail of marijuana or are allowed in office park and industrial districts by special permit. Section 4.16.5, procedure for submittal. 4.16.5.1, the planning board shall be the special granting, special permit granting authority for our RMD special permit Mass General Law 40A Section 9, siting shall be by special permit and development plan review per Section 8.4 of the Lunenburg Protective Bylaw. The criteria, and this is what we were looking for that I said was on the next page. 4.16.5.1A, in granting any special permit, the planning board shall assure that the proposed use will not be injurious or dangerous to the public health or unduly hazardous because of traffic congestion, danger or fire or explosion or other reasons. Will not have a material adverse effect on the value of land and buildings in the neighborhood or on the amenities of that neighborhood. Will be, uh, will be operated with a reasonable regard for order and sightliness if in open use. Will not produce noise vibration, smoke, dust, odor, heat, or glare observable at the lot lines in amounts clearly detrimental to the normal use of adjacent property. 4.165.2 did not change. 4.165.3, the provisions of the section 8.333 as to the special permit and section 8.4 as to the development plan review shall apply to anybody. 
4.165.4 filing can be together. They can be simultaneously. Then we go to 4.165.5. A special permit granted under this section shall have a term limited to the duration of the applicant's ownership of the premise as an RMD. A special permit may be transferred only with the approval of the special permitting granting authority in the form of an amendment to the special permit with all information required in this section. So that's if someone goes to sell theirs, the new owner would need to come in front of us and make sure we have all the state um, filings that would need to be. That's what that one, that was something new we added. 4.16.6, conditional standards. 4.166.1, distance. All proposed RMDs shall be cited accordingly as stated in Massachusetts Department of Public Health, the DAPH 105 CMR 725110, I'm sorry, 110A. 14, which states, RMD shall not be cited within a radius of 500 feet of a school, daycare center, or any facility in which children commonly congregate. The 500 foot distance under this section is measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the facility in question to the nearest point of the proposed RMD. Because I know we were looking at 1,000, so we did change that to the 500, and then we clarified what the two points are, because that's always a where, where are we starting and ending? So we did add those as you requested. So is that the nearest point of the building or the lot line? Let me just reread it. The 500 foot distance under the section is measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the facility in question, so that would be the RMD, to the nearest point, oh no, the facility, the neighbor's home, in question to the nearest point of the RMD. So the nearest point to your home and the RMD would be the two points. So it's the building, not the, building. the lot line. Yes. The building. The building. Okay. Right. Thanks. You're welcome. Good question. 4.166.2, setbacks and buffer strips. Cultivation facilities located outside of retail, commercial, commercial, or office park and industrial districts shall be surrounded by a buffer strip which shall be 200 feet in depth unless the applicant can demonstrate and the planning board finds that adequate buffering can be provided in a narrower buffer strip in all other districts, existing setbacks will apply. So in the business district, commercial district, it's 40 feet. And that would be the, the, the um, distance, the setback. 4.166.3, design standards did not change. 4.166.4, waivers. The planning board may waive any of the conditional standards, so that was where you wanted clarity. So if you go back to page, my page isn't numbered, I'm sorry. Um, 4.16.6, conditional standards. Those are the only things that we would waive, and that's the setbacks. So those, those are really the only things this, the, the planning board would be looking to waive, is if they came in looking for variances on the setbacks, based on the neighbors and, and the area there and the feedback we receive. Security. All security measures to be approved by the Lunenburg Fire and Police Chiefs in an active security system shall be required for all RMD locations and approved by both Lunenburg and uh, Fire and Police Chiefs and submitted to the Planning Board. 14.69.2 RMD shall be open to inspection by the Fire Department, Police Department, Building Official, and the Board of Health within 24 hour notice of request for such inspection to be made by the town department or official. A property contact shall be available to these town departments or official 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. 4.1610, documentation. The planning board shall be provided with all the decisions or approvals, denials, or other substantive actions by the DPH regarding the RMD and all submittals of information between the applicant or RMD and DPH. 
So we had made that more clear because we just said all documentation. So we specified it's the decisions, approvals, denials, and we were more clear there. So in that, the ending is our next steps. We're looking, um, hopefully, to gain approval at our annual town meeting on May 3rd, and then we would need to forward a copy of the accepted bylaw to the Attorney General for approval and wait for that to come back. And then just again for town meeting, I put a little blurb. Massachusetts is starting something new with RMDs over the next year as the DPH works to administer the act and regulations and municipalities work to apply current ordinances and bylaws and develop and enact new ones in light of the state law, many issues I am sure will arise. As that process unfolds, state and town officials will be at the forefront of this evolving era of law. I will, oh, thank you. So I that will, is what I have for you. I will open up the board if they have any questions on this article. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Um, Ebersol. The, the one question I have, um, first of all, I want to thank the planning board <clears> for um, the work that they've done to to revise this. I think it's simplified. I think it's clear on many sections. Oh, good. Thank <clears> you. That was our goal. Um, the one question that you just mentioned about documentation, the last section, um, I know that in your hearing um, you said that the all submitted submittals of information between the applicant, RMD, and DPH um, related to the decisions, approvals, denials, or substantive actions. I think that may not be entirely clear here. I'm just concerned that um, that it's sort of it's all those things and then anything else. So that just it, it might be all submittals of information relating to such decisions and actions mm -hmm. between the applicant. I'll come up with a proposed language for you. It's it's not a substantive change. It's just a clerical change. Okay. So. Mr. Chairman, I just I would agree, I, and I know that was brought up during the hearing, and I know that the the, the um, planning board responded. It's, it's all related information to that to mm -hmm. that substantive action. Mm -hmm. I just think that that there it may be cleaner to just add something to that last sentence, and and I would agree with that. Yeah. Well, and I think that um, Ms. Fleck, that's working with us from MRPC, recommended because we we really don't know all the paperwork entailed mm -hmm. to be able to more specify what other documents might be submitted where it's new we don't know that yet so she felt that umbrella would be able to encompass if there are other documents that we didn't specify by name but i think even if you just add you know related there related to any substantive action or something because mm -hmm. i think the last sentence is just and, um, very I, open yeah. that, but other than that and i also want to thank uh, the planning board for all the work that they've done um, i know you guys have been working very hard on this and i think it's a good bylaw thank you anybody else just uh, also echo a lot of good work so thanks to you and the board thank you I know it's been uh, kind of a rush yeah so, with no uh, director appreciate it um just a question on 4.16.5.1.a criteria number two can you give me an idea how you would measure whether or not a facility would have a material adverse effect on the value of land and buildings in the neighborhood I like guess that some kind of measures you're gonna have or is it gonna be kind of a I, I, subjective or is it I, I think it's gonna be subjective um, a telephone pole in the middle of the field that was a blanket field is, is what uh, you're working with now so you never know what that substantial thing's gonna be till it's in front of you um, so I really can't say exactly to a neighbor what would be critical for them and not critical, but it would be looking at those four points that we have under the criteria um, that we would always look at that that information. Okay. To, that does, if, if does they, this parallel your language for other special permit process? It does. So uh, it's already in there, so there's... It does, exactly. Yeah. Z zoning is sometimes, you'll know it when you see it, but... You, the planning board will actually have to make findings of these similar to the zoning board of appeals so they would have to document what it is and usually what would happen is the abutters would complain or they would be able to document it for them they work together the reality is is that putting anything next to anything is going to affect something sure the question is how material is it and right 
and based on the person, the situation, it it, it differs every time. Sure. sure. And then on 4.16.6.2 on the setbacks and buffer strips, so we establish a 200 foot buffer and less they can show they can adequately buffer in a narrower strip. I mean, is that going to be based on screening, fencing, plantings, or again, that's it's going to be when it's in front of you. Yeah, because if you read the first, we made sure that cultivation facilities located outside. So this is anything that is outside your retail, your commercial, your office park, or industrial. So that only leaves your residential sure. cultivation farmer, sure. and and it's going to be you know just the fencing, the screening that that's a 200 foot buffer, and and really you know for me 200 feet is is a lot, mm -hmm. but again I now go to the solar field, and and when you're standing in someone's backyard, 200 feet really isn't as far as on a piece of paper it sounds, when you're standing there visibly looking at it, right. so um, it's only for the residential area that we would be. So that's a case where the, the, the abutters will have a chance to kind of help sort through that? Exactly. I mean, that's kind of key because it's, it's, exactly. you know, we set, a, we set a setback, but then mm -hmm. we can go back on it immediately. So I know the people impacted the most are next door. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest issues. So I just want to. And if that person next door, the, they're looking for a waiver and the person next door comes and supports the waiver and it's a 50 foot buffer and that neighbor supports that, we, we wouldn't say, no, I'm sorry, it's too hun. We would have definitely worked with that neighbor. and. Okay. And, and if I understand, good, good. That's the goal of that. If I understood Thanks. what you said, the, the buffer for retail, commercial, and office park is 40. Yes, sir. Yes, Jimmy. Yep, absolutely. This is only for the residential. And the, the other examples might be if you had a cliff and that cliff. So you've got some natural. You get some natural some buffers and things mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of topography issues. That's the word I was looking for. Topography. Great. It rhymes with photography. Exactly. Now you'll always remember it. Or I'll get them both. <laughs> Anybody else? One follow-up question, only because I just I just caused this question by hearing you said if if on the area on the uh, subject of setbacks that if a neighbor propose if one property proposed a cultivation that should by this law have a 200 foot buffer, but the neighbor said it was okay to have less, just their desire to have less would be enough to allow the planning board, like that would be a criteria I'm trying to think. I mean, is that, is that the only standard that would be looked at? I mean, I, it's outside of the scope of this bylaw, but I'm just asking the question only because it just popped up in my head because of what you just said. For me, it would usually only be that the farmer doesn't have the 200 foot setback and he's coming to us for a waiver on the 200 and he's gone to his neighbors and they've said yeah it's not a problem and they come and they support that that that's truly what it, it would only be it is that person that doesn't have the extra 200 feet that would be looking for a waiver and if within that neighborhood they don't see that as an issue with us waiving that that's something we would take under advisement and look at okay I thank you for presenting this as so many members, if not all the members said. I think it's excellent work, it's a good, great process to go through. Now, do you think I this presentation add, is, is good for town meeting, for the people to have as a handout? Just so they understand more and to try to take the personal, um, how they feel about the medical marijuana into the zoning of it? It should just be about the bylaw. Exactly. I think what your presentation exactly. here was. And I, I did want to say, echoing what you said, is that Doing this, you, you know, your board is in is in uh, extra strain because you are working with a, a temporary director and for some time without any director. So I want to thank you for, you know, persevering and working through that. I know it's not easy. I've been on the board when we haven't had CAFOs and it's it, it's not easy. So thank you. For thank that. you. Thank you for the compliment. And please extend that to I, I know board. you have a member in the audience right now, but the rest of the members. Too. I will. Thank you. And I'm sure they'll be YouTubing it tomorrow anyway. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you very much. So are you going to vote on this yes. this evening? I will entertain a motion on the, medic, uh, on the uh, Article 27, Registered Marijuana Dispensaries. I would make a motion that the Board of Selectmen support Article 27, Registered Marijuana Dispensaries. Be a recommend approval, I'm assuming. Recommend approval. Okay, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not. That sounds wonderful. See that? Yes. Thank you. A little different. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Have a good night. Article 28, the right to farm bylaw. So we have the Agricultural Commission here with us, some members. How you doing? Good evening. Doug McMillan, 89 Crossroad. I'm Jeffrey Mendoza, 162 Lancaster Avenue. Here representing the Agricultural Commission in hopes to get your support for the right to farm bylaw. Um, the right to farm bylaw doesn't really bring anything new to the table that Lunenburg already offers to its farmers. Basically, it's just here to protect what they already have. Um, with infringement of new people coming to town, um, as well as uh, disgruntled neighbors and, and, and things of that nature. And it protects large scale producers, as well as just the, you know, the small family that wants to have half a dozen chickens in their yard to to teach their kids that that food doesn't just come from the grocery store, um, which I think has been very vital to Lunenburg, um, seeing how we have more farms in it than any other in uh, Worcester County. Uh, still have two active dairies, one that currently produces uh, milk and bottles all of its own products, which is, is huge. That doesn't happen very often anymore. and. Uh, we would really like to try to protect that as much as we can. Um, also in the bylaw, what it would do is if somebody files a grievance with the select board or the zoning board or the, um, the health, board the board of health, board thank board. you, um, they can forward that grievance to the uh, agricultural commission and, and we can handle it from there. Uh, so it may lighten the load for those three departments as well, unless it, it poses imminent threat or danger for public safety. Obviously, then it would, it would stay with them. Um, but we could also be involved. Um, so it's not an extremely lengthy um, bylaw, but we do have a few things that need to be changed. Our draft, unfortunately, was submitted for the warrant, not our final copy, and uh, I want Jeff to touch upon a few of those, I could. if he could. Yes, as, as you're aware, um, our chairman resigned recently, and he was spearheading most of this. Um, the Agricultural Commission itself was brought to Lunenburg by, by our chairman, and as this drew near, um, he resigned. So we've been scrambling sort of like the planning board has, I guess. And um, through some confusion about when the deadline was uh, for submitting this, um, we were offered some help from another department, and unfortunately the draft um, that we had not approved is what was published. So I didn't know if I should address. Um, um, there, were, there are two in section three. There's a simple uh, typographical error. Um, in the second sentence, it, it says the above described agricultural activities may occur of holidays, and that should be on holidays. It says on holidays, weekdays, and weekends. Um, the other typographical error is in section four. Let's see, it is the last sentence, and it says, talking about the raising and keeping of livestock um, take place in the town of Lunenburg and that such activities may cause or create noise, duct and odors, and that's supposed to be dust. Um, so those are the two typos. Um, we also in section four, in the first sentence, uh, we say the town of Lunenburg expressed in this bylaw regarding agricultural uses. We had added and practices um, after uses and most importantly to me being a non-commercial farmer in section three um, the sentence um, a little more than halfway down the benefits and protections of the bylaw are intended to apply exclusively to those commercial agricultural and farming operations we wanted to strike exclusively and strike commercial so that it would read the benefits and protections of the bylaw are intended to apply to those agricultural and farming operations and activities. Um, 
to protect, again, as, as Doug had said, backyard agriculture um, of various sorts. So those were the changes that um, we had made to our final draft that was approved you know, by our commission. And from what I understand, we would then bring those to the floor of the town meeting at the time. What we would, the four changes that you made, two of them are obviously just clearly typographical exactly. since duct makes no sense in that context. <laughs> and I think the mm -hmm. on or of, I don't think everybody's going to object to. Right. But the other two as well, which are just striking of the words, mm -hmm. what we would say is that you would talk with the town moderator. Okay. Before the meeting and say that's where you're going to read it. I would make sure that the projection system that's going to show it on the screen, so that would be worked through, through your, your office, correct? Yes. Just make sure that the wording is what it is. Okay. And we will quickly, just as you did here, note what the difference, maybe we won't even, probably it's best to note the four differences mm -hmm. since it's only going to take less than a minute right. to do. So everybody's aware that what's in their warrant, these are the things that didn't make it in and there are Two of them are typographical errors anyway, which, by the way, I saw one in the, in the marijuana one, so you may want to, I'll point it out to you in a bit, it's just a typographical error. Um, so that's how you would, you would just introduce it. You wouldn't introduce this and then go to amend it because that just lengthens a process that I don't think anybody's going to object to to begin with. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to say also, if I may, um, when, when the Agricultural Commission first started meeting, um, the right to farm bylaw passage of it um, was sort of our focus, the, the main drive of what we were going to try to accomplish first. And um, our member Renee Trachemus, who is in the audience, pointed out that on the town, um, the town crest or the town seal, the importance of agriculture in this community is apparent. Um, I have felt for a long time that it adds to the appeal of the town for people moving in and it keeps some of us staying longer than maybe we had originally intended to. And um, well, thank you for staying. <laughs> it's it's very dear to 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 me, obviously to the farm families in town. And um, I would I would hope that the board of selectmen would support us in passage of this. And I would like to re reiterate too that Massachusetts is already a right to farm state, and that what this is doing is bringing the right to farm provisions and benefits to the local level. And um, there are also, um, there are certain um, potential financial um, state funding opportunities that communities that are right to farm communities um, can apply for. And again, in our situation where, um, where Jim Latanzi was sort of spearheading this, you know, the specifics of those, um, are things that we are we are beginning to look into to take over, you know, where he left off and to finish what he started, but that is potentially another benefit um, that could be you know, helpful for the town to keep open space and whatnot, which we all which we all like. So, you hang up there. If there are any questions, Mrs. Bertram. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a question on Section 5. You had talked at the beginning about the option of if someone moves in next to a farm and now they have a complaint or they, mm -hmm. they complain to the Board of Health and, and then that process would be that the Board of Health would then forward it to the Agricultural Commission for resolution. The way that Section 5 reads is, is if you read the Board of Health except in cases of an imminent danger or public health risk may forward a copy of the grievance to the Agricultural Commission. So you keeping this as an option or do, was it your intent to make it a requirement? And the only reason I bring it up is because the word may versus shall um, is, is a very different meaning legally. And, and in that paragraph, and even the first sentence, you say may notwithstanding pursuing any other available remedy file a grievance. You may want to look at that word may. And if it's your intent to make it a requirement that that is the process, that it goes to the Agricultural Commission, I think you may want to revisit that and, and change it to shall. Okay. I think in this instance, where it comes to the Board of Health, it's only may with that if it's imminent danger or public safety. All the others are shall. Right. Well, I think then I th well just if I may pitch yeah. in here for okay. a second, the way that sentence is worded, then the word should be shall, because it says the Board of Health, except in case of imminent danger of public health. Okay, thank you. It should shall forward. That means right. if there is a case of imminent health, then they, then they don't have to. Okay, 
Thank you. And I don't know about the, the first sentence I'm not as concerned about, but it says may not we're standing pursuing any other available remedy file a grievance with the select board, the zoning enforcement officer or the board of health, depending on the nature of the grievance. Right. I, I think may may be appropriate there. But yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're telling the people who may make a complaint what they can what, do. What they can you do. Can't, okay. Can't tell them what they have to do. Okay. Right. All right. So we should address that with the moderator before the meeting. Also. Yeah. Just just tell them that the just show them quickly the annotated changes that you're making on a piece of paper. They're, they'll be pretty quick, and I don't see any reason. I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but I don't see any reason why. It was pretty good on the fly. Certainly not any substantial reason, so. Okay, thank you. I will say that, first of all, again, thank you as for the, with the planning board. Thank you for presenting this and under really a little bit more uh, stressful circumstances than usual because of the loss of the chair as, as, as he moved to another, uh, you know, the neighboring city. Uh, so thank you for coming in and, and the rest of the committee put it, pulling this together. Uh, it's kind of amazing to me. I've lived here since 1998 when it was first proposed, uh, I don't know, at least in 2000 that I can remember. Uh, a former chair of this committee, of this board, Rob Bowen, he wasn't chair at the time, but he was talking about an agricultural commission and wanting to pass a right to farm bylaw back then. And when he was chair in the, the, the mid 2000s, really wanted to get it done. And it was amazing to me that it hadn't been in a, in a community whose seal clearly shows that Agriculture is a core component, a keystone component even, of the town that hadn't been passed. So I'm very glad, and I think uh, Mr. Bowen, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I, I will mention, because he was a big advocate of this, that I'm sure he'll be happy that this is being done now too, and I hope it gets the support of the town, and I believe it will. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Ebersole. Um, the question I have, um, it, it, it inter interrelates between the zoning and this bylaw, which I support. But section two definition states farm shall include any parcel or contiguous parcel of land or water bodies used for the primary purpose of agricultural or accessory thereto. Um, the, the zoning bylaw defines a farm as five acres or more. Um, and then there's other section allowing people to keep a small flock of poultry or saddle horses for use by the residents. Um, knowing some areas of town that are very close to each other. Uh, I would be concerned with a right to farm bylaw for, you know, a quarter acre, a, an eighth of an acre land, not to negate the fact that people may be able to have their own chickens and other, other animals like that. So that's my only concern on that. When I did my research, this is standard throughout right to farm bylaws and this is the model bylaw that this is modeled on um, and so I put a call into uh, the state agent to see if they have any of that information so that would be one thing I would like to see some clarity of not to have somebody thinking that they can have a farm and you know when you say for the primary purpose of agriculture okay if you have two acres is one acre your house and the other acre used for farm, that would tend to make more sense to me. But if you have an eighth of an acre, is that property primarily for? And it's more for the guidance of the Agricultural Commission in disputes, because there will be disputes. There already are disputes. So I like that mechanism for resolution of the disputes. So I think between now and town meeting, if we can just find out what other communities have had for experience with sizes of lots. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The other thing is that our zoning bylaw uses the term lot, and this says parcel. I know this is not zoning, but at some point, somebody's gonna sue somebody, and if we can avoid a lot of those questions now, that would be good. Um, Massachusetts State's two and a half? Uh, I believe so, I think it's two and five. There, yeah. there is a discrepancy currently between the state. Um, and the town, in the state zonings. Minimum. I, I believe the state minimum is, is two acres, and the town currently requires five, and that is something that we, we um, want we're looking to address in the future it's on as your well. Agenda for the future, to, so. to bring those into line. But again, the two acres is still quite a bit larger than a lot of parcels in parts of town. So. I, I think what would be helpful for me is um, if you have some real life examples of people in town that are farming, mm -hmm. 
that would fall under this, I think then that makes this a personal bylaw instead of some theoretical. And I think that would help people. I mean, they may vote against it as a result of it, but if you say Jane Jones has this property and it works there. Mm -hmm. um, For smaller parcels? Yep. Okay. Uh, something that may clear up that a little bit is the last se uh, sentence of Section 3. Moreover, nothing in this right to farm bylaw shall be deemed as acquiring any interest in land or as imposing any land use regulation, which is properly the subject of state statute regulation or local zoning law. So zoning will still, assuming it's Correct. done legally, still covers. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we recommend to town meeting approval of this bylaw. Second. As revised. Any, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you, thank gentlemen, you and everybody. thank you again to the member in the audience and the rest of your commission. Thank You're welcome. You very much. Okay, let's go to the top of the list. And Article 9, FY14 Budget Amendments. I have provided you with a, an updated spreadsheet which reflects the fiscal 2014 budget amendments and supplementary or supplemental appropriation that will be requested of town meeting. The good news is that uh, I've been able to uh, balance the deficit that we still had a small deficit as of last week um, and we will also be able to pay the money tech supplemental assessment in fiscal 14 so those funds will be will come out of the 15 budget and as I've recommended be um, made available to Lunenburg Public Schools so in terms of article 9 um, the request will be to move some surpluses from interest and temporary loans, liability insurance, workers' compensation, health insurance, life insurance, historical commission, um, both the general reserve fund and the salary reserve fund, and unemployment expense, and also from our recycling line to cover projected deficits in legal expense of $10,000, Police lockup of eight thousand um, dollars, injury leave, which is which is public safety injury leave, uh, projected deficit of thirteen thousand four hundred and seven dollars, um, projected deficit in the fire department of sixteen thousand um, dollars, the large deficit in our snow removal account of two hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars, and a projected deficit in veterans benefits of thirty seven thousand four hundred nine dollars. Uh, we will do that through moving um, some overages in, in the accounts that I mentioned previously, plus also seek a supplemental appropriation of free cash in the amount of $154,563, and then additionally uh, transferring some unexpended appropriations from two articles, um, both related to school planning expenses in the amount of $1,500 and $2,439. The one other item I want to mention that's not on your agenda tonight, I'll have to put it on for next week, is I will need um, some action under Article 8, which is the prior year unpaid bills. There was a, a bill that was brought to my attention just the end of last week in the amount of $570, and it relates to uh, a, a medical charge for a police IOD. What happens is we have um, insurance for uh, police fire injured on duty claims up to a certain amount. And um, because we have so few claims, we manage those in-house, but sometimes it takes a long time before we find out um, you know, when somebody's close to what their maximum is, once they've reached their maximum, then the town pays 100%. And this is just one of those bills for um, for a, a, a MRI, I think it was, that w has just come to our attention. So that we will need to take care of that as well, and I'll put that on for next week. But the, the good news is that we are able to cover all of our... Um, 
projected deficits in fiscal 14, either through budget adjustments or that supplemental appropriation of free cash. And we will still have a, a very small amount of free cash remaining of $5,230. Well, each week this has come down, and now we actually have a balance of free cash. So I'm hoping by town meeting, we'll be able to fund another department oh, by now. I'm, I'm done working on this. <laughs> you break even, and now you're done working on it? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> just, just a question. Is there any significance to the highlighting of line items that are oh. 70 and 75? So there is. The way that I separated these, um, we, we have um, our budget approved in line items, but the, the motion is specific to the groupings, general government, public safety, unclassified. So the whether those are just the different groups. Any, I mean, there's always a chance that this will no, change. No, there's no changes. <laughs> I, I said I'm done. One way or the other. Okay, well, before, before that change, before that decision changes, I'll entertain a motion on a recommendation from the board. I would recommend, oh, I would move that the board recommend approval. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Just just noting that's Article 9 and not Article 8, which we'll do next meeting. That's right. correct. And even though it includes that article, I think, you know, we can't vote on that yeah. particularly, but we can vote on this. I think the only thing I would add, again, I can't highlight this enough. We came into this year in a pretty tight fiscal situation. We had one of our more expensive winters for snow removal and sanding and salting that we've had in years. Um, we're actually getting ahead on the Monty Tech unexpected assessment, and we're still able to... Uh, come out a little bit ahead. So yep. I want to thank, again, the department heads, the departments, the employees, and the town manager for making that all happen. I agree. And, I, and on top of that, I will, I will note that the three biggest areas that we're, ta that we're getting this money from is liability insurance and health insurance that came in less than expected in large amounts, 21000 for liability insurance, 80000 for health insurance, and then the full return of the reserve fund, which is $50,000. And the reserve fund, of course, is for unforeseen things. And we have been very, very, the town manager and, and her account, you know, budget staff and all the boards and committees in towns have been really good at planning what they need. And, you know, barring any emergencies, which have not happened, knock on wood, that we have not had to use the reserve fund. So it becomes a, really a matter of management and planning and budgeting and fulfilling that plan, which I think the town manager and, and her staff and all the department heads and everybody has done a great job at doing, so thank you. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed? None. We'll take this moment before we go to administrative that it was brought to my attention that we don't we don't have many no votes uh, on on the board, <laughs> and I want to just point out that you know part of the reason that is because we work hard behind the scenes in workshops and and first drafts and everything. So when it comes to votes, we've all had our discussion points heard by the op the possible opposition parties uh, or the neighboring parties and employees. And so these are things that we've worked together to be able to come to agreement on. So that is why you don't hear a lot of no votes on articles and things like this, uh, because we've been well informed and we've had discussions along the way. So just, just wanted to note that. Okay, so the administration reorganization. That's article 19. So I distributed to you last week a draft document which was um, the detail of the administrative organizational plan. Um, I did mention to you that after actually sitting down and, and putting the words on paper and going through the, the charter and the bylaw that I, I really don't think that this qualifies for an administrative change under the charter. Um, that doesn't mean that it can't be presented at, at town meeting and publicly here for full disclosure so people understand what the proposal is. 
Um, I did have a brief conversation with town council and sent this off to town council to take a look at last week and unfortunately have not heard back yet. Um, the, the process under the charter requires a public hearing, which we did advertise for next week, so I intend to move forward with the public hearing and hopefully we'll have an opinion from town council before that, but we certainly can present it. I did distribute this document after it was presented to you last week to all of the affected departments in the chairs of those committees and asked them to send it along to their committee members as well for um, comment. And I, I have received very limited comment back. I, I did receive um, something from the Board of Health supporting the um, expanded concept of the planning director's role to include economic to include economic development, but expressed a, a concern about a potential conflict of interest. Um, you know, with with having a consolidated department, the the board of health is specifically excluded, as I mentioned last week, because state law does give them um, a separation of <coughs> duty and authority under Mass General Law, and the the intent, as I've mentioned before, really is for coordinated effort and not to supersede the role of any individual staff member or any board of committee that is part of land use. And we've specifically talked about, um, you know, just recently with one particular development that is in front of the planning board and in front of conservation and, and at times in front of the board of health. And sometimes um, you think the other department knows what you're doing and that that necess that isn't necessarily the case so um, I do think the coordinated effort is very important um, with land use and and that is why I am proposing this I did also want to mention because there I have had people express an interest in the position so the intent would be if this is approved in whatever manner it needs to be approved um, and I'm assuming that's not going to occur until after town meeting. This position would be advertised like any other position is it, within the town. I would anticipate that we would advertise for a period of three to four weeks and that interviews would be conducted thereafter. So assuming that the approval is obtained in the month of May, early in the month of May, um, the position would be advertised throughout the month of May. Uh, inter Applications would be reviewed and interviews would be scheduled for the beginning of June, and hopefully we would have somebody on board for the end of June or, or 1st of July. I haven't um, decided or put together a plan on who would be involved in those interviews, but with every other department head level position that or that we've gone through that this process for in the seven years I've been here, it's been more than just me involved in the um, interview process, and I would expect that to be the case here as well. I will open it up for discussion. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, um, just two points that were raised at last week's meeting, um, and that is, personally, I think this is a great position. I don't believe it requires um, a bylaw um, or changes to the administrative plan. Um, I'm happy with the transparency in the public hearing, and hopefully town council concurs with that opinion. Um, but just a question on page three, um, where you talk about coordinating the activities of all land use boards, committees, and departments, and then you specify those departments. I think, as was stated last week, adding the sewer commission there, and also I would like to see, at least from a coordination level, the DPW, um, because there are several, especially with planning, um, there are several factors of that process that impacts the DPW. Mm -hmm. I did make note of those last week, and I, I will update the document to reflect those changes. Where was that insertion? I'm sorry. On the paragraph that says to meet this goal paragraph? We'll coordinate the activities of all yeah. land use right here. Okay. <laughs> And how did, you, how did you want to insert the DPW? Because the DPW has their own director. 
They do have their own director, but the, when we talk about coordinating the activities, and this is something that I've seen as being the planning board liaison, and I've had conversations with the DPW director on this on a number of occasions, is sometimes a plan will go through, and there is a peer review process, but unfortunately there's not a streamlined process, and, and I think we talked about this as a board, that identifies stormwater structures associated with a subdivision, mm -hmm. and, and that's primarily my focus, is even if there were a process implemented, and this is going to require coordination from both the DPW and the planning director, to coordinate that, to identify those stormwater structures, to identify the maintenance associated with those. If waivers are granted for length of road, for example, in a subdivision, that obviously has a direct impact on DPW. Um, from a road perspective. So there are a number of factors that the planning board deals with when they receive plans. And unfortunately, some of this, the maintenance associated with stormwater structures or, or waivers to roadways aren't necessarily picked up when the plan is originally submitted. It's, it's picked up throughout the planning board process or conservation commission hearings, for example. And on a couple of occasions, I have been at Conservation Commission meetings or planning board meetings and looked at the stormwater structures associated with a project and then had a conversation with the DBW director and said, you know, hey, are you aware of this? And subsequent to that, letters have been sent by the DPW director to the planning board or to the Zoning Board of Appeals, for example, that are looking at subdivisions because he wasn't aware of the magnitude of a project. So I think in planning, whether it be you know, any time a large plan or a large sub subdivision comes into the town, the planning director should coordinate that with the DPW from both a road perspective as well as a stormwater management perspective because he is responsible for our stormwater management. Okay. And the, the other, the opposite way, um, as an example of high fields, um, they are proposing to, um, as a result of the town asking them, to have the sewer go down Maple Parkway and White Street, um, and the coordination of that is the repaving of White Street. So it, it works the other way too. So I think that the, the it, this is a really a communication device and, exactly. and, make it, and it's probably gonna have a lot of bureaucratic forms and requires the notification back and forth so that they actually do talk to each other. So I think this would allow that to happen. I think that's what I, was getting at to me it's I mean and it, and it's fine it's just in the determination of the word coordinate I just don't want to coord coordinate as far as make everyone aware of things that they need to as opposed to coordinate as be the one who dictates what happens when and it could be you know certainly can control you know conceive to be that idea and I just want to avoid that because we have directors and other things but as far as communication and and making everybody aware, I think that's fine. Right, and that's why I left it out of the last paragraph, which says the land use director will maintain direct or functional supervision. I specifically left it off of that. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I want it in the coordination because obviously right. they would be peers versus supervisors. And that's why I asked for the clarification. So I, I, and I would agree with, with the way you explained that. I'm perfectly fine with that. Any other comments, changes? Everybody's had this. Again, I would just uh, reiterate what the town manager and what Mrs. Bertram have said. I also don't believe it requires uh, or it meets the, it meets the hurdles of uh, charter administration plan, but even if there's an off chance that it might, I think it's better to tell the, 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 you know, the town meeting voters and the residents what exactly is being planned so that everybody knows what's being planned and we can be as open and transparent as possible. Uh, certainly this plan should follow the charter requirements so that there will be no floor amendments. This will be presented, the town manager will present this plan to town meeting and it will either be approved or not approved, but it cannot be amended on the floor. Um, that's why we'll have the public hearing next week. That's why we're having these discussions uh, the, tonight. The only thing I have a question on is when we talk about voting this on town meeting floor, my concern is that my understanding is if it is determined to meet the requirements of the administrative plan, a bylaw is gonna be required, and we don't have a bylaw on the floor. <clears throat> no, there's no bylaw that's required. It's saying that if you want it, I, I, the way I read it, and this is okay. my interpretation, okay is that if in the reorganization you get rid of or create a new agency, which the town manager is not, then it would have to include those bylaws. We're not changing any agencies. We're changing, you know, like you said, coordination, things like that. We're not, we're extending the use of a, what's now planning director to incorporate an economic development planner 
and making it a land use director. I guess I'm confused. Does that necessitate town meeting action? I mean, this is, to me, this is an administrative process that should be allowed. We're not changing the, the, the powers or duties of any board or entity in town. So I guess I'm questioning why town, I'm, I'm certainly open to transparency in presenting this at town meeting, but I'm concerned as to why town meeting action is required. Well, and I guess that's why I went to town council is because I did find the process that's outlined in the charter confusing because it does talk about bylaws and there are no bylaws that are impacted by this. Um, and I think if I, I think if it and I'll talk to the moderator about this too. If it is something that doesn't that we don't, we're not following the process outlined in the charter, then maybe this gets presented under here reports exactly. instead of that warrant article. So there's no confusion. People are, ex you know, people expecting to, to vote under the warrant article. But it is, I, I found the language somewhat confusing because you go through the process and it, when you start to read it, it sounds like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go through this process, but then it, or I need to go this, through this process, but then it talks about amending bylaws or creating bylaws and I don't know that it's necessary and the other thing I'm not sure if I mentioned it last week or not but I did um, review the charters and bylaws of several other communities that I know operate they have a community development department or a land use department and I didn't find in any of those communities that they had any language in bylaw in town bylaws or charters for the creation of a land use department like you see with the creation of a consolidated um, municipal facilities department or a consolidated department of public works or something like that. So I don't think what we're doing is any different than what a lot of other communities are doing. It, I, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Mrs. Burton. I feel that you know, transparency is critical here and I support it wholeheartedly. I also support this position wholeheartedly. And I think it's important that we have our public hearing and check with town council. But I really, I believe this is within the per, uh, this issue is within the purview of the town manager. And to the extent that it impacts the budget, we're talking about that. To the extent that it impacts uh, coordination, we're talking about that. But I'm not sure. I would hope that this plays out that it's not, in fact, a, a, an up or down vote at the town meeting. I don't. Well. I can't say because we're not we're right. two weeks, two Saturdays away. But you know, I, I would have no problem bringing this and continuing this going forward as an administrative plan, as dictated, you know, as detailed in the charter in section five. It does talk about town manager bringing forward administrative plans. Certainly, this she's even entitling an administrative plan, I believe. So. Um, uh, I think it falls under that, whether it's identically needed. I mean, the, the, the whole idea of bylaws, by the way, there's two things that you can have in that section. You can have the written bylaws or by reorganization if you intend, the way I read it, the way you, if you intend on removing, deleting a town agency and abolishing it or creating a new one, that would require bylaws. But the, the redirection of authority and who reports and the, the internal structure certainly falls under the administrative plan in the bylaw. And I, I think the bylaw is there just to let everybody know in an open town meeting form of government that that's what's being done. Uh, I don't think it jeopardized that. I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression that we hope it doesn't have to follow this so we can just do it. I'm fully, fully uh, confident that if we present it to the town and the town manager presents to the town and the town meeting, that it'll get approved. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world how this is organized. And it, it obviously, town manager spent a lot of time and thought behind this and has a lot of experience. So uh, I don't want to give people the wrong impression that we don't have the ability or that we're trying to hide something and we hope we don't have a, a article to go on. I'm fully prepared to go forward on the article on town floor anyway, regardless of what town council says, even if they say, well, you won't really have to, I'd still think it would be in the best interest of the town to do it anyway. I think we have a solid case, and I think town meeting is a reasonable body. So I think if they heard the presentation, there should be no concern. I get, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Um, 
I, to the town manager, um, one of the paragraphs say the land use will director will maintain director functional supervision of building commissioner, building assistant, conservation administrative. Are those defined in the charter or the bylaw now of who supervises them? I don't think they are. Um, the, the only references would be to the appointment, how those individuals are appointed, and then under um, Section 4-2 of the char charter, which is the town manager's um, duties and responsibilities, just generally in um, you know day-to-day -day supervision op of, of operations. There's nothing specific to, um, nothing more specific than that. The, the reason I bring it up is that if you have direct supervision, theoretically, that is the higher, the, the evaluation and the firing of, um, of those officials. And if we need the administrative part in order to make that position have those duties, I would support it. Um, I support this whole concept anyways. But if we don't need to have a vote because it's not required, I don't think we should have a vote even though it's a way to get people's indication, just because we shouldn't be asking town meeting to vote on something if it's, unless it's not, unless it's required. So um, I, I would await um, town uh, council's uh, opinion, but I would say in the event that it is required, I would make a motion that we recommend approval to town meeting of this proposal. Well, we're going to have a public hearing next week. Oh, so right. Rather, thank you. I'd rather yep. wait till then. Withdraw that motion. Can I, could I just make a comment about the appointment and discipline and, and all of that? And I, I thought I had included something in here to exclude that, but I'm not seeing it right now, and I'm happy to clarify that because there, the intent is not to, um, to delegate appointment authority or to delegate um, disciplinary action that that is specific in the charter that that falls under the town manager and we we wouldn't do that in we don't it it's that's not even the case with any of our existing departments with public works um or the police department so and if I, you take that out it's even less of an administrative reorganization it really is a coordination effort right so I do think we have to relook at that paragraph then, would maintain direct or functional supervision, because that's, that's the way I certainly took it, is the way Mr. Ebersol okay. just outlined. I, I so. Okay, so we will have the public hearing for this uh, administrative reorganization of the land use departments next Tuesday. And that concludes the review and discussion and recommendations of the warrant article agenda item. We will go to request to abate ambulance bill. Okay, I did not make copies of this. I will send this down for everybody to look at, but these, um, the requests for abatements of bills contain confidential information, and so I'll, I'll just send this down. But we do have a request to abate $3,947.10 for account WHITB. Um, this is an ambulance bill. We do have a process, a procedure that the board has approved. Uh, there's an application that needs to be submitted uh, by the person requesting the abatement. The person has to meet certain income um, guidelines and uh, provide proof of income and um, that the person doesn't have insurance that that covers the amount. So the application has been completed, reviewed by both the um, fire chief, who who is the the first responder, so to speak, on these, um, and the the individual does meet the income guidelines, and and that is sufficiently documented. Mr. Chairman, while you're reviewing a question for the town manager. Go ahead, Mr. Ebersole. Um, do we have, we have a written policy on uh, abatement of ambulance bills? I know we've done this in the past, but do we have a written policy? You do. Um, it is not included okay. in that. Is that in the Board of Selectmen's 
It should oh, be. Oh, it should be? Yeah, okay. it should be. Right. It was something that maybe five years ago the board adopted. Okay, I'm just trying to remember what we had in our policies. The, the reason I bring it up is that um, health care facilities that uh, serve uh, low and moderate income uh, have what's known as a sliding fee scale. Uh, I will get you information on that, that based on the income level, um, the fee slides to be a portion of. Yeah. You know, So this is not one bill, this is? Looks like it, it's several. Yeah. Several, okay, yes. I was thinking there was, I didn't know we charged it that much. Um, that was my first thought too, and then after <laughs> looking at the paperwork, there are numerous um, transports associated with this, with this bill. Six, six transports. Okay. If anybody has any questions or not, this would be the time. Otherwise, I will entertain a motion on the request to abate the ambulance bills as noted in that Mr. Uh, Chairman, file that went down. Mr. Yes. Chairman, I would make a motion to abate the ambulance bills as noted in the documentation amounting to $3,947.10. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, just me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is a, there is a signature thing here. Right on the side. Okay. okay, appoint a designee for the declaration of support, no support for the FY15 mosquito control funding. So this um, has come to you in the past. In 2010, the mosquito control board uh, had some issue with getting support for their budget from their member communities, and they instituted this process where they actually um, ask communities within the district to affirmatively support or not support their budget. Um, this, is, this comes to us as an assessment. 
because we're part of the district. And I have the assessment for fiscal 15 for the town of Lunenburg is $62,374. That is included in my budget recommendation. This comes to the Board of Health because the Board of Health is our designated liaison to the Mosquito Control District. And they send this over to us every year for you to give them permission to say that we support the Mosquito Control District budget. It seems like a very cumbersome process, but they've had some trouble in the past, the Mosquito Control District, so they've asked um, that the towns handle um, approval or support of their budget in this manner. So this is a request from the Board of Health to designate the Chair of the Board of Health to officially support on behalf of the Town of Lunenburg the Fiscal 15 Assessment for the Mosquito Control District. What was the assessment last year or this year? I can tell you that. Very similar. Um, interesting that I would open up to the exact page. <laughs> <coughs> Sixty thousand nine hundred and eighty-five dollars, going up to sixty-two thousand three hundred and seventy-four. Or, yep, that's yeah, that's correct. Okay. And the Board of Health supports this assessment. Yes. So that's a quick math. What four percent increase? Given the number of lakes in our community, the number of wetlands in our community, and the disease associated with mosquitoes, I, having worked on the Board of Health for 18 years, um, I recognize the importance of this program, and I wholeheartedly support it. And I think it does make sense to have the Board of Health, since they are the ones who deal with central mos mass mosquito control on a regular basis. Um, you know, any work that they, they do in the community, whether it be, they don't only do spraying for mosquitoes, they also do cleaning of streams, cleaning of wetlands. Um, they will go on people's property if requested and, and treat various areas, um, larviciding, et cetera. And, and the Board of Health receives reports on those on a weekly basis. So I think it does make sense to designate the Board of Health as the um, representative or, or designee to declare support for this program. I know how thick the mosquitoes are. That's with the control. I can only, <laughs> in my nightmares, imagine what it would be like without. So I would, I would support that as well. And I have no problem keeping the designee uh, in the Board of Health where it has been. I think uh, we had this discussion last year, and you know, I think. I don't know if there's any measures as to how effective it is, um, and we're not in place to do that. I think the Board of Health is much more so, given the reporting. I mean, I hope questions are asked to make sure that the dollars spent do make sense and are well used. Um, obviously, we have a need, and the increase is less than 2.5%, so it's within uh, what one would expect or hope, so I would also defer to the Board of Health. As well. Ditto. Okay. So do we need we need a vote on this? Yes, please. All right, so I would entertain a motion. I would make a motion to appoint the chairman of the Board of Health as a designee uh, for the mosquito control funding. Second. And, well, hold on. Oh. It has to include that you're supporting the budget. As a, right, the supporting and, the budget. Supporting the budget. Second. Excellent. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Mr. Chairman, just one comment on that subject. I just want people to be aware. It used to be under central mass mosquito control that we would spray streets and you, there would be a notification. That is no longer the program. They do not spray streets anymore. So if you are interested in spraying, you need to contact them. They have it on their website um, and request service. And, and typically, I know in some areas, neighborhoods will do it because obviously it's more effective if your neighborhood does it than if just you do it. Um, so I would recommend if people are interested in having their property sprayed or having it looked at for larva sighting to, to contact them either via telephone or their website. Excellent. Minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, review of the... Okay, so there's three items. The Board of Selectmen goals and the Town Manager goals we're going to do next week. And we're going to do the review of the Q3 financials right now. Mr. Chairman, we're, are we being televised next week? I am hoping it's going to be televised. I want it to be. Okay, because it's normally not, because the last 
week of the, is normally the sewer commission. Right, and they are not meeting here. We are meeting here. It's Great. already been cleared yes. with them. So I've distributed to you a copy of the report that the town accountant put together f that reflects our financial statements through the third quarter, or March 31st of 2014. Um, after I reviewed her report, I didn't find anything that I agreed with her that I wanted to add, so I just okayed it. So I'll go through what she well, has to say, had to say. I think you, that I, I think I may have heard that wrong. Disagreed. You didn't find, you didn't find anything yeah, that disagreed. you agreed You said you didn't find her. anything get you agreed to. <laughs> get close to my bedtime. I'm like, did I hear that right? <laughs> Sorry, I do that. It's going to be a long meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do that about every other week, say something like that. So in terms of revenues, um, Again, this is 75% of the year. We've collected 76.44% of our fiscal 14 estimate. Um, local receipts, we've collected almost 87% of our estimate. Our largest um, local receipt is motor vehicle excise, and we've collected 82% as of the end of the third quarter, which is pretty significant because our large commitment for motor vehicle excise goes out in February. Um, people have 30 days to pay, so we have a, a pretty good um, on-time payment of motor vehicle excise taxes. Fines and forfeits, we've talked about this before. We certainly talked about it when the, the second quarter financials were presented. Uh, we have collected $13,000 more of our original estimate, and this is due to um, fines that the police department is issuing. Um, for motor vehicle infractions. We've asked the police chief for some additional detail uh, on that, and I will present that to you as soon as, as soon as it is received. Our local option meals tax, we've collected 93% of our estimate as of third quarter, so that is very promising. Licenses, licenses and permits, we've collected 84%. Um, this is a little skewed because we we did um, issue building permits for the, both of the solar projects. Um, thankfully, we issued them because I don't know that we would make our estimate if, if we did not have those two projects issued within the current fiscal year. Um, and then our miscellaneous non-recurring revenue, we've collected 107.5% of that, <clears throat> excuse me, of that estimate. 99,000 of that is coming from um, the incentive payment for building three at Tritown. So that that is good news that we have that. And we also received a $48,000 reimbursement um, from FEMA for one of the storms in, in February of 2013. So are those numbers captured in the free cash number you're balancing the budget with, or? There's no, because the, the free cash we're using is free cash certified as of July 1st okay. of 2013. So assuming the budget ends up where we expect it to be, that will be free cash for next year. Next, next year. year. And just, you know, a reminder on the zoning incentive, I mean, what our policy has been since that started, since Tritown went in, is that money has gone basically into a stabilization. You know, we've got it sectioned off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that's the plan with this as well and the money be set aside for neighborhood around impacts, you know, maybe for the Summer Street project, that type of thing. I was just going to say, you know, that may be a place that we need to look at because obviously this neighborhood is impacted by Summer Street and perhaps looking at for the engineering or where we're, we're short on that, it might make sense to look to that area for the funding. The money that we've paid locally for the Summer Street project has come out of that, that pot of money. In terms of real estate taxes, uh, we've collected 74%, which is uh, very good, because we don't ever collect 100% at, at, as of June 30, so that's a very strong collection for real estate taxes. Expenditures, um, in total, we've expended 73% of our budgeted expenditures at our 75% mark for the year. We've been through all of these um, a number of times, talking about the fiscal 14 budget adjustments. Um, we, we do have some overages, as I've mentioned, in legal expense, police lockup, um, injury leave, snow removal, veterans benefits. 
Um, there isn't anything on here that we haven't talked about in the past. So the town accountant does put together a detail on all of our revenues so you can compare um, budget to actual by line item rather than by category as they've been presented. And then she also has included a line item um, expenditure report so you can look at all the departments by line, what has been expended, including the school department. And this will be presented or provided to the Finance Committee at their meeting on Thursday night as well. Any questions for the town manager on the Q3 uh, expenditure revenue picture? Okay. Now minutes. Minutes are going down already. Warrants. It's payable. <coughs> Counts payable in the amount of two hundred two thousand eight hundred thirty dollars and three cents. Payroll in the amount of six hundred twenty one thousand eight hundred sixty three dollars and ninety two cents. And payroll deductions in the amount of two hundred fifty seven thousand eight hundred eleven dollars and sixty nine cents. Action file issues. I just have one. It's not so much an action file issue, but we we are getting requests and and uh, you know all different sorts of um, I don't know what the proper word would be, but uh, inquiries about from committees and boards and from townspeople about open meeting law. So if there is anything about open meeting law that people from boards and committees and commissions want to discuss, if they have questions, the uh, office that handles those, the open meeting law, is the town clerk. So the town clerk should be notified of any questions, inquiries, complaints, whatever, about open meeting law in any regard. Uh, the town, uh, through the board and through the town manager, uh, periodically have open meeting law seminars that we have hosted by our town council and we will continue to do that but on those times when it's not the, you know that one is not forthcoming questions shouldn't be I mean certainly people can ask any board but really the the, the office and the and the official that has uh, direct responsibility to open town meeting laws the town clerk about questions about it so I just want to indicate that so they shouldn't come to other offices and have to be redirected it just it just kind of slows down the process and slows down the answers you may just um, I just wanted to add that um, I, I have been getting lots of questions about agendas whether or not they're sufficient um, whether agenda items are sufficiently um, detailed enough questions on minutes whether what needs to be in minutes and again all of those I refer to the town clerk and they need to be referred to the town clerk because the town clerk is the individual who is responsible for uh, posting the agendas uh, maintaining minutes and such so while I would love to be able to help everybody on everything uh, the help that I provide in that area is you need to talk to the town clerk Mr. Chairman, just following up on that, um, I think what, what some of the issues that go on is a result of the highlighting of the open mean law and the violations that have occurred in various places in town um, is that people have not attended the workshops. Um, I want to um, congratulate again uh, our minutes. Uh, I know they've been recently revised to be less all the pertinent details are in there and so I think that uh, our minutes and agendas 
Um, and I'm not taking any credit for it. Uh, our minutes and agendas are a good format for other boards and commissions to use. Um, I think that's where, when I've looked at various um, agenda items, um, the simple thing is, would the average citizen who doesn't know what you're doing know what you're going to do that night? And then the minutes should say, what did you do that night? And I shouldn't have to call anybody to find out. And that's what my mantra has been and will continue to be. Um, and um, the town clerk is an important resource for that. Um, if the board or commission does not continue to do it and somebody has a complaint, there's a procedure by which you have to complain to the board. And then it follows up with the attorney general's office after that. Um, the goal would not be to that point. Um, but I still get complaints from citizens and have seen things myself um, of people not complying. And in this day and age of the Attorney General and Town Council's information is on YouTube. If you go to the Lundberg Access Channel, those are there. They're on, Carrie has posted them on the town's website. So I'd encourage any volunteer committee to do it. Um, it doesn't have to be so detailed that you're gonna have to spend a lot of time, but it just should be simple uh, and to the point. Um, thank you. Any other action file issues? Committee reports, Board of Health. No report. Building Reuse Committee. No report. Capital Planning Committee. Uh, just mention one more time that the Capital Planning Committee was invited and will join uh, the Finance Committee this coming Thursday to go over their uh, policy on capital spending. And I think that's a good uh, cross-board coordination. Uh, the Finance Committee, which is next, uh, meets Thursday night here in Town Hall at 7 o'clock, but it will not be televised. Okay. Library Board of Trustees. Uh, the Library Board of Trustees has received the resignation of Joanne McQuaid. Uh, Carrie has, was CC'd on that, and she and I communicated, and she will be setting up a time for a joint meeting of the two boards to fill that vacancy. That uh, resignation was not in time to be part of this election, even though it's, it was dated April 15th. It was too late to get on the ballot and go through the process. So just so people are aware, according to Charter, we have to have the two boards, the Board of Selectmen and the Library Board of Trustees, will appoint somebody to serve until next election at which point the remainder of the seat will be up for a ballot vote. We should probably, I don't know if we're going to be able to fit it. We can talk. I'm not against hearing it next week, but it's probably more likely going to be the week after a town meeting. You have a very aggressive agenda for next right, that's week. That's what I'm saying. So I think probably it's going to be the first meeting in, in May <clears throat> at the earliest. MPO. The last MPL meeting was uh, last was April 16th. Um, there were several amendments to the existing TIP, and basically those are due in large part to uh, the Lemonster reconstruction of Route 13 project that was originally scheduled um, for this TIP. It is not going to be ready now until September 30th of 2014 for advertising. So they're basically they're reallocating some of the money uh, in the current TIP to other projects. Some of those other projects, and I'm not going to go through them all, this TIP is available at the MRPC website, the amendments. Um, but they're proposing a Winchington multi-use trail construction. Um, so a portion of the funding that was allocated to Lemonster will be going there, as well as to um, construction of a sidewalk at the Wachusett Commuter Rail Station. And in Hubbardstown, they're looking at resurfacing and related work on Burnshirt Road. Um, so we went through those various amendments to the TIP. Um, the MART has also finalized changes and updates to their funding element, and that really was an oversight, so there were some adjustments in the MART funding as well. And then the, uh, the remainder of the meeting really focused on, on the preliminary discussions for the 1518 tip. And unfortunately, it was not good news. Um, it was looking like we had some money available in 16 at our last meeting. However, that has changed. And the main reason that has changed is because the intersection improvements that were proposed on Route 12 and Sterling have gone from 1.3 million to in excess of 6.1 million. 
and <laughs> that's, that's big quite and quite I was, that, that was that was a big change order, and I actually I actually want to carry on that. <laughs> I actually want to follow up on a on a one on one meeting with Brad Harris to understand that. I did a question it at the MPO meeting, and Arthur Frost from MassDOT basically outlined that it's changes. This is. Um, the getting off 190 and getting onto Route 12 is the is the intersection that they're talking about. But apparently they were originally proposing just a roundabout. That was the first scenario on what they were proposing. But now after looking at the project, that's escalated into more improvements for other intersections leading up to that. So it's changed the whole landscape for the 1518 tip. And Brad Harris from MRPC went through four different scenarios and frankly, None of them were really re well received. Um, <laughs> so, so they're going to revisit and, and come back to our meeting in May. Um, but basically, a lot of the projects that were figured in the TIP are dropping off the TIP in, in scenarios one through three. And the secretary, the Clint, Clinton Bench, who was representing the secretary of MassDOT, had some problem with that. Is, you know, basically, they were taking other projects and putting them in the TIP and taking off projects that were in the TIP. So there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Um, but bottom line is, it's a very tight four years for the TIP. And unfortunately, um, we went through what, what they called the universe of projects. And there's a number of projects that are ranked. Um, and they, Chase Road is not in, in that universe of projects. And I was concerned that it wasn't going to be. And the reason it isn't is because we were too late in getting it to viewed and vetted by MassDOT. Um, MassDOT has vetted it, and I did bring this up at the MPO meeting. However, MRPC did not have any details, nor has it received a project number. So we need to, to really get on that and meet with Brad Harris and, and uh, MassDOT and get the details to them so it can at least be incorporated in the appendix of the TIP. Um, and again, I am going to have a meeting with uh, Brad Harris in the near future to talk about this. Um, and I also want to follow up with Jack Rodequins, but perhaps if you could, they are not aware of this project. And, and when I say they, I mean MRPC, and they are the ones who put together the projects for um, incorporation into the TIP. And it was not, it was, our meeting with MassDOT was not until after TIP day. So it wasn't even vetted for TIP day. Um, and moving forward, that's a critical day. And any project that we want to be considered for federal funding, we have to get before MassDOT sooner rather than later, and it's a simple process. It's a filling out of a PNF, a project need form, sending it to MassDOT, getting their buy-in into the project, and then if it does receive a good rating from MassDOT, then we can bring it forward for inclusion in a future TIP. And, and there are 25 roads in Lunenburg that are eligible for federal aid funding and we're not taking advantage of this program. Now granted, it does look bleak right now, but things change every year, as you can see with, with the changing of this one project. But it's, it's not uncommon to see adjustments um, every year. So it doesn't look good for funding for Chase Road. I will continue to, to fight for it. Um, but you know, our engineer, apparently I had received an email from the town manager that our engineer was optimistic. But the bottom line is we need to become more involved in this MPO process and get the data to them as soon as possible. So if there are other projects, when we look at our, our paving and our road management plan, we need to really look at the federal aid eligible roads, of which there are 25, determine whether or not we want to move forward. And if we do intend to move forward within a four-year <coughs> period, get them in to the, into MassDOT, get them vetted, and get them on in the, in, in the, in the tip. Um, and yes, we would have to put up money for engineering. Yes, there's an upfront cost, but the payback is astronomical. So we all know we don't have money to fund our roadways. This is an opportunity for us to get more involved. And, and I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated because I think we've got to get more involved and, and I just didn't have the data to get them. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't lobby for something if I didn't have the data. So. Your, your meeting next week, um, the bulk of the meeting is to address road issues, both with the DPW director and with um, one of the engineering firms that we've been working with, and that, that was the intent. Um, there are a number of other items on, on that agenda, too, but the bulk of the meeting will be road issues. Planning board. No report. 
<clears throat> School Advisory Committee on Acceptance and Diversity. They're meeting Thursday. School Committee. Uh, no report. School Building Committee. We met the week before last. The uh, designer, architect, cost estimator has been going through. The uh, construction management company has been going through. Again, revising estimates. Um, there's some distance between the two of them. Um, but there's not a huge cause for concern just yet, and we haven't started going to bid, so uh, once we do, we'll get a better, clearer picture of how we're looking. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask a question on the school building committee? Sure. Um, we talked briefly about this on the peer review, and, and Mr. Matthews wasn't in attendance. I, I, the planning board mentioned, the planning board cha chairman mentioned that they do have a peer reviewer that's on board that will do this a review of this pro bono. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where we are in that process or whether we're going to send it to the planning board or what that. that that's what. We decided we were. Okay, and so we are. They were okay. under a limited peer review. and. Okay, because I didn't know that that had been decided. I just wanted to, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Sewer Commission. No report. And the thing I saw, I have resent my letter. <laughs> so I think it's be followed up probably by a phone call soon. I don't take kindly to non-responses from things that are taxpayer funded. So um, time manager reports. I have two items that I wanted to review with you. First, um, we did finally receive a revised fiscal 15 assessment letter from Monty Tech. Um, for those of you who heard Monty Tech's presentation to the Finance Committee, they mentioned that there would be a revision. Um, I think they mentioned about $12,000. It's actually $17,988 less than what is projected in the budget. So my recommendation would be that those funds, in addition to what, what is in the budget for that supplemental assessment, be um, reappropriated to the Lunenburg Public Schools in fiscal 2015. Do, do you have a kind of a running number of what the gap looks like at the moment? Or is that for another time? You know, I, I don't. I need to talk to the superintendent. The um, I was still showing the $450,000 which um, does not include some other things that that have come up since. So I will get that from her, and we can talk about that at next week's meeting. Thank you. Okay. And then the second that I wanted to mention is a letter that we received from Tennessee Gas Pipeline. And I, I think I may have sent this out by email when it was first received, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm trying to, or in the process of scheduling a representative from Tennessee Gas Pipeline to come in front of the board to make a presentation on this proposed project, and that will occur um, May, June, July timeframe. There are, um, I think, 30 or so communities in Massachusetts that are impacted by this proposed project, and they're trying to schedule these public presentations for all of the communities in that time frame. But uh, because I've received a couple of calls from people who uh, potentially are impacted, I just wanted to you know, present this at, at a selectman's meeting, although I don't have a whole lot of detail other than what I've submitted to you. So Tennessee Gas Pipeline is looking to, um, or proposing the Northeast Expansion Project, which is an upgrade of an existing pipeline within New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. The proposed project will result in the construction of approximately 250 miles of pipeline, and they are looking to locate a significant portion of this pipeline within existing utility um, easements. But they are in the process right now of doing some surveying, and they have contacted some individual homeowners. Um, homeowners have the option to not allow them on the property, but, but all they're doing right now is, is they're looking to see if soil conditions are um, such that, that the, their project could go through particular areas. But again, they're looking to stay within existing utility corridors, so this this shouldn't shouldn't be a, a huge project, but people are obviously concerned when somebody from out of state is coming and, and asking for permission to, to look at their property. The town of Lunenburg cannot review any agreements or provide any legal advice to property owners on whether or not the document they're asking individuals to sign is legally sufficient. Um, I've, I've had people ask if we could do that. We, 
we certainly can't do that as we wouldn't for any any project uh, but this is something that they are looking at placing in service in November 2018. So there is a long vetting process. There is a federal regulatory process that this goes through. I'm assuming there is also some state compliance and then local compliance um, with any, any um, existing local requirements. So again, I'm looking to, to schedule a public presentation in the May, June, July time frame in front of this board, and um, I will provide, keep the board updated with any additional information. So this is the same company we already had a project a couple of years back, right? Yes, it is. So were there any lingering issues still? I know some people were having problems with liens on their properties because of issues between subcontractors and Tennessee Gas. As far as we know, are those resolved or... It's my understanding that, that all of those issues have been, I don't want to say long resolved, but you know, at least a couple of years okay. at this point in time. So I think our experience with the last project is, from a construction standpoint, I think it was fairly smooth for a large-scale project. Mm -hmm. right. What upset people, and rightly so, was, was what um, Mr. Matthews mentioned, that there was an issue between Tennessee Gas Pipeline and a subcontractor, um, and the subcontractor asserted that that he it wasn't paid um, either the amount that was supposed to be paid or in the manner that was supposed to be paid, and and was able to temporarily place liens on individual properties because of this, which obviously would be very upsetting to to anybody. Sure. The town in that instance did provide um, legal assistance to the town as a whole, but specifically coordinated activities with um, attorneys that individuals had hired um, themselves. This certainly was a, a highly unusual circumstance, and hopefully that won't happen again. And for that project, the, the board and the town really went through extraordinary uh, efforts to have the, ten the, the Tennessee pipeline, the Tennessee gas pipeline, uh, personnel meet with the property owners to discuss exactly where it was going to go through individual lots. In some cases, people worked with the company to divert the, the, the pipeline so it didn't have to remove structures that may have been on, uh, on the properties. And all in all, although there were some, some contention here and there, I think that uh, being proactive and, and having the, the property owners and the, and the corporation meet and be able to talk was very helpful in getting it done quickly and most efficiently and with the least amount of contention. So uh, if this would happen, I think we would probably engage in that process again because I think it was uh, overall successful. There were certainly bumps along the way as any project of this size and scope would be. Is that all for? Yes. Okay, so we have two resignations. One is from Jim Latanzi, who was in the Agricultural Commission. He has uh, since moved uh, to Fitchburg and therefore uh, needed to resign. And uh, I don't think I have a letter from him. Or and I don't have a letter from uh, Joe Levine, who was part of the Building Reuse Committee. Mr. Chairman, I do have an email, and I'll make sure that it gets sent to uh, the town manager. Uh, Joe had some uh, personal projects that he needed to work on, and uh, gave us, a, you know, a good service for the first phase of the of the process. Okay, so I think we will accept uh, accept these resignations, and uh, I did not work with Mr. Levine, but certainly. Uh, Mr. Latanzi bringing the Agricultural Commission uh, and pushing it to the forefront, I think uh, I'd like to send him a letter on behalf of the board if the board agrees. Uh, I cannot speak for Mr. Levine. I did not work with him. You did, so. I, I, we certainly appreciated his uh, service, but it was a, it was a short term, okay. and, and the, the uh, committee has thanked him. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I think we should still send a letter to Mr. Levine. Thank you. Okay. Then we will send them to vote if the board approves. I would like to send letters to both. As would I. Okay. 
And of course, that means we have, now, is the building reuse committee, is Mr. Levine's position been replaced already, or is that? Yes, it has, we go to Mr. Matthews from last week, okay. Right. So then we will have, <laughs> we have an opening then on the Agricultural Commission. Uh, if members of the Agricultural Commission want to reach out to people in the agricultural community, otherwise, we, we, of course, we would open it up to the whole town. Anybody who wants to serve on the Agricultural Commission, please uh, obtain a talent bank form, either from the website, uh, or from the town clerk's office and fill it out and we will uh, be glad to interview you for, the, for that opening. No executive session. We will have a, a special meeting uh, next Tuesday, which we don't usually meet the last Tuesday of the month, but because it's the week right before, the Tuesday before town meeting, we will have a meeting next week. It will be here at seven o'clock and uh, it will be televised, correct? Yes. yes. So. Any further or additional public comment from the board? Mr. Chairman, two items. Um, just noting that today is Earth Day, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Um, secondly, I'm gonna get information on um, uh, our licensees that may be collecting meals tax. Um, there is a provision, and it's only a $25 fee, to have the applicants get a certificate of good standing from the Department of Revenue. Uh, to make sure that we continue to receive the uh, meals tax revenue from our uh, our licensees. I think it'd be money well spent, I agree. Any further public comment from the public? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. See everybody next Tuesday night. Good night.